Hello friends, thank you for stopping by. We're looking at the Tascam Porta Capture X8. The audio you're hearing right now was recorded using the X8's included stereo microphones in the XY configuration. How do I sound? Since I do not have a recording studio, I'm sitting in my closet to reduce any background noise. The X8 is a six channel audio recorder featuring a combination of four XLR inputs which also double as TRS inputs. There is also two 3.5 mm inputs on top which can be used to plug in lavier microphones or the included stereo microphones. The X8 seems to have a decent build, made of plastic. However, a simple drop on the ground could possibly render the device useless, especially if it cracked the touchscreen. I'm a bit surprised Tascam wouldn't include a protective carry case or at least beef this thing up a bit to protect from any mishaps. Anyway. The X8 can be powered by four AA batteries or via a USB-C cable, of which is not included. The X8 is packed full of features accessible through its touchscreen. To cover each individual feature and function of the X8 would make this for a very long video. But for the most part, I was able to familiarize myself with the X8 after a couple of uses. There's a few reasons why I was interested in the X8. One of them was its ability to record 32-bit flow audio. 32-bit flow audio gives you the ability to have much more control over the recorded audio in post-production. It allows you to easily restore peaking audio and also recover audio that was recorded too low. Imagine plugging in with a soundboard at an event. You set your levels just perfect for the person giving a presentation. Then, unexpectedly, the speaker cues a song that starts playing 10 times higher than you anticipated. Normally, your audio for that part of the presentation would be ruined. But using 32-bit flow audio, you would be able to bring that peaking, distorted audio back down to desired levels in post and have it sounding fantastic. Another feature of the X8 that grabbed my attention is that it creates a separate audio file for each individual input as well as a mixed track. This can be very handy in many situations. Imagine having a guitar, drums, a singer, and a piano all plugged in during a live performance. Later, when you review the files, you discover the vocals were recorded too low and the drums too high. Thanks to the individual track recordings, you would be able to adjust the vocals and drums in post and save the live performance audio. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
let's take a look around the Tascam Porta Capture X8. I'll give you a quick tour here. On the side, we have two of the XLR inputs, also double as TRS inputs. These do offer phantom voltage, both 24 and 48 volts. Next to that, we have camera in, camera out. Then we have a headphone port, and this would control the headphone volume. This does have a internal speaker, which is located right here but by default, it will be turned off. So you'll have to go into the settings to turn that on. It's not very loud, and I guess it just lets you know, hey, sound actually did record, but you'll probably wanna use the headphones most definitely. Next to that, we have a little door right here. This little cover pops open. You can put a Bluetooth module in here that's not included and allows it to connect to your phone and can control the device, I believe, via Bluetooth or check the levels. I don't have that, so I can't really speak on that. On this side, we have two more XLR inputs, also double as TRS inputs. Um, next to that, we have the power on. You would just slide this to turn it on and slide this to turn it off. And then we have the hold option, which allows the device to be non-responsive. Uh, lock in your settings, basically. Next to this, we have a micro SD card slot. This will take up to a 500 gigabyte SD card, and it just slides in there like that. Next to that, we do have the USB Type-C. This will allow you to power the device, but you can also use this to plug it into your uh, computer or your tablet and use the X8 as a audio interface. Up on top, we have the two stereo microphones these are kind of wonky getting them in and out they're currently in the a b uh, configuration but you can take them out and put them the x y configure configuration just for a narrower um, sound capture and this is also where you could attach like a lavier microphone if you wanted to or two of them so and they just kind of slide into here and screw down to lock into place on the back we have a spot for a quarter 20 and also a hot shoe and then we just have the battery door it takes four AA batteries on the front we have the uh, stop button also doubles as a home button and a record and play pause and then mark quickly i'm going to do a startup test just so we can see how long this device takes to power on and to start recording so we'll go now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So about 11 seconds and we're able to turn this on and to start recording. We'll go ahead and stop recording now. And we'll just go through some of these settings. So up here, you'll see these three bars. This is gonna take you to this screen here, you'll have your launcher, um, browse, general settings, input select, mix down, record settings, recording guide, and punch IO. So the launcher is where you're going to see all the presets. Imagine presets like that you would find in a camera. Um, so we have ASMR, uh, voice, and then we have music. Music's kind of neat. You can select which instrument you'll be recording. Uh, we can go for a piano, vocal, wind instrument, string, band, etc. Um, and also we can set some reverb type styles. We have large hall, small hall, room, studio, uh, plate one, plate two. And you can adjust the uh, level of the reverb, turn it on and off. And also when you, I wanted to show you kind of how this dial worked. When you want to fine tune some of your levels, you can just use this wheel down here at the bottom and it allows you to um, turn it up and down. So we'll go back into launcher here and we have the manual where you'll set all the settings yourself. Um, field recording, which they say is good for like outdoors or just, I don't know, here, we'll check this out for a second because they do have some options for recording things like birds or you could do city, nature, a vehicle, no preset and go back into the launcher we have podcast podcast has like some pads um, presets for like clapping and booing i don't remember which 
one it is, but um, you can't hear them, but they're playing there. If you had headphones on, you'd be able to hear that. Go back into launcher. Um, we do have a tuner. You can tune each individual input, um, but the tuning range is only from 440 hertz. And we can go down here to 435 hertz or 445 hertz. Can't quite get down there to 432, but that's what you got there. And we also have the Metrodome and a uh, the SD card reader. So we're gonna go back in here to uh, manual. And under manual, we can see we have home here. We go to input. Now these are gonna show all your inputs right down here. Right now, the only ones plugged in are the stereo microphones. So we would want to turn three, four, five, six off. Otherwise it will create individual tracks for all of those inputs. And you don't necessarily want that if you don't have anything recording into that. Let's say that I did have a, um, an input number three over here. Let's say I did have a shotgun microphone that required phantom power. I would just click on the microphone and right here, I would go down and I could turn on the phantom power. It will ask if I'm sure if I want to turn on the phantom power. In this case, I don't have anything plugged in, so I'm just going to hit no. And we do have auto gain, low cut, low cut options. You have 40 hertz, 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 220 hertz. And you have your limiter, EQ, and phase invert. Uh, the only issues I've had with this touchscreen at all has been for the phantom power. One time I was trying to turn the phantom power on and it would not slide over. It was completely unresponsive. I could turn on auto gain and every other, oops. Let me go back in here to, I was on three. I could turn on every other thing um, but phantom power and I fixed that by turning it off and turning it back on. So that just sh says, you know, with these touch screens, what can go wrong uh, will go wrong and it's already happened, but it's only happened once. So that's a good thing, I guess um, Input like I said, you can control click on your inputs and I can dial these down and up with my finger And I can finally tune them with this wheel down here We can jump over here to mixer and I can turn the levels up and turn them up 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 mic check one two and I can control the pan from left to right I'll just leave this on the right because it's obviously plugged into the right. And if we wanted to hit record, we can go mic check one, two, mic check one, two, mic check one, two. And I can hit stop here and I can play this back. You can hear that tiny little speaker. Oh, I got to turn it up. You can't really hear it that loud, but you do have a speaker. Um, that is on there for your input select you can move these inputs around they are all numbered one two three four five six but I could put the one and two on the three and four I could put the three and four on the five and six and I could put five and six on three and four it doesn't really matter but they do give you that option um, besides that let's see here I'll go through uh, we can go into your general settings if you wanted to like format your SD card, it'd be under system. And let's see, media format. You could just do a quick format and format the SD card. One thing I did also notice about this is that if the battery is running low, it will give you a battery warning. And if you're recording while that battery warning does pop up, it will stop your recording. So that's not very cool at all. Can you guys tell it's cold out here in my garage? So I got two microphones hooked up. I got a Sennheiser and the Audio Technica. And I'm recording with both of them right now. And I got them on track three and five. The Audio Technica, I think sounds way better. Um, and I'm about arm lengths away. Uh, it does use 24 volts. And then I got the Sennheiser too. So this is just an audio test. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull down. Man, I sound congested. I'm going to pull down the gain on both of them like 
all the way down almost. Uh, let's go to, I'm going to do 4 dB on each one. Let me just dial it in here. Okay, so we got 4 dB dialed on each one, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now I'm doing this test that way, if the levels were set too low, we could hear what it's going to be like when I correct it. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the levels way too high. So I'm going to crank those levels up right now. Brace yourself. Mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. All right, guys, we're back inside now. And we're going to look at these files here on the computer. So if I open up the X8, you'll see right away when we go click on sound, we're going to have one two files and then a mix because i was recording on track three and on five so those are going to be my individual tracks and then we'll have a mix and then there'll be a bin file then we'll have three five and then a mix so i've already brought three and five individually into my project i could do the mix but i wanted to work with these tracks individually just to show you how i can bring them up and what they would sound like so we will start with the Audio Technica to the part when I start lowering the levels all the way down. You can see the waveform or the audio levels, I'm sorry, is about negative 30. So I'm going to make a new compound clip. Uh, I'm working in Final Cut Pro. Did I just say that? I don't remember. Anyway, Audio Technica, we're going to make a new compound clip here. And I'm actually going to, let's do this. I want to cut this here. And then I'm going to cut this here because the part where I'm screaming, I'm not going to have to make the, the new compound clip. So obviously I can only bring these levels up to 12. Oh, let's do that. So we'll do new compound clip. And we'll just say audio T. And we're going to crank that level up. And let's see what that's at now. We're getting levels right around negative 12. Let's do it one more time. New compound clip. And I'll crank that up to like 9. And we'll see what that sounds like now. Uh, let's go to... So we got 4 dB dialed on each one, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now I'm doing this test so that way if the levels were set too low, we could hear what it's going to be like when I correct it. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the levels. So we got 4 dB dialed on each one, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now I'm doing this test so that way if the levels were set too low, we could hear what it's going to be like when I correct it. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the levels. It's not too bad if you did record your levels too low. You can restore them, and it sounds pretty good. Let's go over here to the part where I'm like screaming again. We'll start one, with two, the Audio mic Technica. Check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. Man, the Audio Technica is super hot. Check, one, two, one. Man, the Audio Technica is super hot. Check, one, two, one. Not too bad, not too bad. Cool.